G'day mates, Jackaro Toro here and on this channel I focus on Australian Aborigines, their languages, cultures, history eh, and so on. Eh, and I have an ongoing series where I introduce Australian Aboriginal kinship systems. Well, specifically systems of social organization. Because you see, it is a fact that Australian Aboriginal kinship systems include also marriage rules and kinship terminology. And while certain systems of social organization have been borrowed over huge areas in Australia, kinship terminology is usually not borrowed. This is something that each tribe comes up with. Uh, so I thought why not start a series about kinship terminology as well uh, and hopefully together with the other series of videos you will be able to see the impenetrable complexity as Patrick McConville writes about that I quoted in the first video the impenetrable complexity of Australian uh, kinship systems. So here we have kinship terms, a small set of kinship terms as it so happens from the Ngara language of the Pilbara region of Western Australia. Uh, we have a huge number of kinship terms. Why so many kinship terms? Well, for one thing, children were called by name. But when they started to be initiated into adulthood, uh, they stopped using their names uh, in public. Uh, and you had to have other ways to refer to people so that people would understand who or what group of people you were talking about. And I'm sure the systems of social organization also plays in here. Uh, how society is organized. Anyway, for Ngara, the kinship terms have been recorded by my friend and colleague Brian Gatenbeek, uh, and he has been very careful. In some cases he has not recorded though whether a term is a term of reference or a term of address. A term of reference used when you talk about someone, term of address used, used when you address uh, someone. But in some cases uh, I can see uh, what we are probably dealing with anyway. Now an added level of complexity here comes from the fact that the consultant gave definitions for different terms, uh, told Gatenbeek how they are used. But then it was noted that he did not himself use some of the kinship terms in the way he had said that they are used. So what to make of that? Well, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to go with his definitions. Uh, and actually, I have not included all the detail there is for all terms. Yes, uh, anyway, so different terms of reference uh, and address. Is that relevant to have? Well, they certainly have a lot of it uh, in Mara. And for male speakers of Swedish, this should not be a completely uh, alien idea. Because you see, I have noted that especially male speakers, they refer to their parents when their parents are not present as fashan and mushan. Uh, these terms come from far and mur which were terms of address that fell out of favor at some point 
earlier in the 20th century before I came around. E and far and mur are in turn uh, short forms of the older fader and moder. So here we see that Swedish and English are really closely related. Anyway, when talking about your parents, fashan and moshan are considered a bit impolite as terms of address by most people. So as terms of address are instead used papa and mamma. Mamma or mama, which by the way means mama all over the world, except for in a largish area in Northern Australia where it means papa for some reason, but I will get back to that soon. So anyway, when looking at the bewildering number of kinship terms in Mara, I thought to myself, how do I divide all these terms up? Uh, I could divide them into terms that include a pronoun on the one hand and terms that don't on the other. Uh, terms of reference on the one hand and terms of address on the other, of course. Terms that take dual and plural marking on the one hand and terms that don't uh, on the other. Terms that include common elements. Uh, we have also here. And terms that don't. I have decided though in the end to go with terms for parents, which is what we have here. And this gets fairly complicated. Terms for children, also complicated. Terms for uh, siblings, parents, siblings, cousins, uh, aunts and uncles, grandparents and grandchildren. When we come to those categories, it's much more straightforward. Not at all as many different categories. But then I end up with a largish group of kin terms that I call miscellaneous uh, kin terms because they don't fit into any of the categories. Uh, I will get to those later. As I said, we start with terms for parents in Mara uh, today. So, uh, terms of reference used by children are mama and bibi, where mama means father, but also father's sister, as it so happens. Bibi then is mother, but it is also the word for breast in the Mara language. Yes, terms of reference, but the terms of address that children were supposed to use eh, and that were considered more polite are nganorumara on the one hand and nganorangarango on the other. Here we have ngano, first person singular pronoun eh, dative. Dative, which is also frequently used for possessive in Mara. So this then means my. Uh, my father and my mother. We might note here that these two terms are related. Nanorumara and Ninorumara. Where Ninu is second person singular pronoun. A dative. So your. This is a term of reference used by a mother when talking to her child about the child's uh, father. Yes, but children tend to grow up uh, and adults were supposed to use other terms. We have here in the middle column uh, waringoji, 
a term of reference and this means parent because warimoji can be either uh, the father or the mother in this middle column we also have three related terms jamininji uh, jamininjigara almost a tongue twister jamininjimalinga where gara marks dual and malinga uh, plural so when talking to one of the parents we have another term of reference here uh, so this is a term of reference for the other uh, parent uh, and here we have a term of address for parents when you are addressing both parents uh, this could be real parents or classified parents by the way uh, so you are addressing both and that's why it takes dual marking anyway let's get back to this middle column in a little while let's look at other terms of reference we have malia other terms of reference uh, used by adults malia which is father or father's brother which makes sense because in this system of social organization a man and his brothers are all the fathers of all their children uh, and a woman and her sisters are all the mothers of all their respective uh, children anyway malia here we find a distinction between bibi pardo and waniya where bibi pardo is one's own uh, mother uh, and waniya is either one's classified mother or mother's younger sister and here this can be either a real or a classified uh, younger sister of mothers yes coming back to the middle column we had a term of reference here then but the two related terms the dual and the plural one once are terms of address so for parents real or classified and for parents plus a sibling to one of them uh, real or classified here there is also a distinction between jamrinin malinga here and warninyu gara warinyu gara sorry uh, and here I am unsure whether this should be seen as the dual marker because uh, these are still three people so probably not anyway uh, parents plus a sibling real or classified here it's real parents plus either ma mother's brother or father's sister which are really important uh, relatives yes there are other terms for father and more specific terms i have not memorized them all let's see here we have bonari first these are all terms of reference bonari term of reference used by a man when talking to his sister's son about the sister's son's father yes so you see very specific term this means that you don't have to use the name uh, and then we have kodaninyoro here used by brother-in-law when asking about my father but actually this is also a term used by a man when speaking to his brother about his brother's uh, children so according to the system of social organization a man and his brothers were all collectively fathers to all their children 
but you uh, made distinctions anyway. The Nara tribe made distinctions. Uh, and then we have Kalyani Nyoro uh, or Kalyan Nyoro, a term of reference used by a man to his Yago. Yago uh, his Yago is his male cross cousin. I will get back to cousins in a later video, but that would be his mother's brother's son or his father's sister's son. So his male cross cousin when referring to the Yago's uh, father. Here we have Nanganinyoro or Nanganyoro. And there is an additional term that means the same thing. Warinyoro. Uh, and you see that the Yago is important there as well. Term of reference used by a man to his Yago about Yago's mother, who is also the speaker's mother-in-law, real or classified, uh, and the speaker's father's sister, real or classified, uh, or both for that matter. Yes, we have lots of different terms, uh, but there are also these terms here that could be mentioned in this context. So, Gundan Malinga, with plural marking, means parents, two people that are married to each other, and one or more of their children. Gundan Malinga. And we have Mandi Malinga, which means a group of fathers eh, and sons. And I could mention a few more terms here, but I won't. Uh, this will be all for today. This is probably enough. If you've made it this far, why not like this video uh, and share it with someone you think might be interested and consider subscribing. Uh, and I will be back then. So, see you later.